We are showered up, smelling good, fed ourselves, and we are ready to hit the road. Wisconsin, look at you with all your beautiful fall colors. Wow. You see, once you get out to this area, you get to see a lot more colors. Out on the plains, it's mostly just ugly yellows and browns all fall. Same thing on the other side of the border. When you get into Ontario, which is straight north of here on the other side of the, of the Great Lakes, same thing. You get all the beautiful colors because you get different, different trees growing, right? A different region you get more oranges and bright reds and all the colors of fall living in manitoba i've i never got to see the true colors of fall until i started trucking and coming out east it's a beautiful season it's so terrible and so depressing that it gets followed by a terrible season but fall is you know I, I, i've always said the spring is my favorite season of the year Oh, my mom had a good point. She was telling me, you know, if spring is nice, yeah, because you have the promise of summer and a whole year of warmth ahead of you. But in fall time, there's no bugs, at least where we are. So we have these beautiful fall colors, nice, cool, crisp temperatures, but not too cold. And no bugs. The mosquitoes are gone. In springtime, you get all the bugs and mosquitoes and everything coming out and everything's all wet and mucky because the snow just melted. I totally get why people like fall. I just don't like what comes after fall. That's why I've never liked fall because it just reminds me, oh, you know what's coming around the corner. Nah, I think fall is actually pretty great. You know, I might even, I might even move it to the number one spot of my favorite seasons. I don't know. I'll think about it. I'll let you know. You wanna know something pretty cool? We just traveled through Minneapolis and uh, suddenly a motorcade went driving past me. And I pay attention to these things because I pay attention to the news a lot and I, I, I get a lot of different sources and I know what the presidential motorcade looks like, okay? I, I, I'm very fascinated by it because I think it's pretty cool. So when this motorcade started passing me, I was like, wait a second, wait a second. I was on the phone with Brett at the time. I'm like, Brett, hold on. That's the president. <laughs> I thought it was the president. I'm like, well, what's he doing in Minneapolis? So later on, uh, I pulled over. I found out it was actually Mike Pence and Ivanka Trump. They were uh, in Minneapolis uh, for a couple of events. It's election year, right? So they're doing their speeches and stuff. Anyways. The motorcade passing, that, that was pretty cool. You know, you always see it on the internet and stuff, but 
Yeah, they got like the, the lead vehicles and then, you know, they got the decoy cars and then they got that one truck that has that jammer on it that jams all the signals in the area. And then, of course, they got a bunch of other like, like, uh, uh, military police or whatever following them with uh, the, their big black SUVs. Uh, then they have, obviously filled with Secret Service agents, right? Tinted out windows. Then they have the press van following and a couple of buses and ambulances and a whole pile of cop cars. And it was exciting. Uh, that was cool. I've never seen that. I've always wanted to see the motorcade. It wasn't the presidential motorcade, but it was the vice president and the president's daughters. I, I don't really care how you guys feel about, about them. Let's not make it about that. And the motorcade is pretty cool. Doesn't matter who the president is at the time, the motorcade's the same, right? Man. It's like being next to like one of the most protected people on the planet. And the biggest, one of the most VIPs on the planet, right? It's like, wow, I can't believe I'm on the same highway as them. <laughs> speeches in Minneapolis today uh, doing their campaign thing and we're in Wisconsin now enjoying the fall colors it's actually not as folly fallish folly it's not the, the trees aren't as colored here because we're getting further south and we're meeting that line where it's still too warm for it to actually change the, the colors of the trees like down south I can guarantee you right now it's everything's still green because that's awesome. But here, I think we're getting to that point where it's still a little too warm. See, it's, the trees are a little bit yellow here, a little bit, but still mostly green, right? This will all change color in the next few weeks. That's one of the coolest things about this job is you get to see how different regions change seasons at different times. Especially when you live as far north as I do, which I'm still a southern boy, I live in southern Manitoba. There's a whole country north of me yet that it's probably winter in northern Manitoba already. I wouldn't doubt it if Churchill's under snow. Probably not, but I wouldn't be surprised. And then above that, we got the territories yet. Like above Manitoba, we got Nunavut yet. There's like 50,000 people living up there, no roads. But there's people up there, they live there. River Falls, Wisconsin. How do you feel about that diesel? Very nice town. Very nice. Especially the way the sun sets there. It's very nice. It is, isn't it? So I'm taking my half hour here because this is where I'm going to take it. And that's my reason. I'm going to do a little fiddling around here on the computer. And we're going to go for a walk. And I'm going to grab a coffee. I don't even need one, but I'm going to have one anyway. I'm gonna head all over to uh, head on over to Racine, Wisconsin. But I just looked on the map. I realized that Racine is right between Milwaukee and Kenosha. Now that last town may ring a bell with you, and the first one too. Both of those towns are not really places I want to spend the night in, especially today, in this day and age. So I'm gonna stop well before Milwaukee. We'll go to bed there. We'll start early in the morning. I don't want to be anywhere in that area along the lake at night. So we'll figure it out. I got a couple more hours to go yet from here, but take my half hour and we'll see how we feel. smells lemony fresh it's a constant battle to keep the truck clean constant every day first you got a vacuum and then you got to wet the floors with deter with like uh, this this stuff Lysol and then you scrub it in with a coarse brush 
get all the dirt out of all the grooves and stuff. And you wipe it up with paper towel. <coughs> and then the truck smells nice and clean. Floor looks a lot better than it did. You gotta do that every day. And vacuum, vacuum, vacuum every time you stop. I've got two vacuums in here. I've got this one. Shark vacuum and I've got an identical one to that one. Uh, but this one just gets into the corners. The attachments fit on both of them. They're both identical, right? But since I vacuum so much because of somebody, it's just faster for me to have two in here. And when I stop, just quickly get the corners, get the middle of it, get the rug. Then once a day on my half hour, uh, wipe it all down with uh, cleaner. And uh, the truck actually stays smelling really nice. It smells like lemons in here right now. Very nice, right, Diesel? It's all for you, because I love you that much, buddy. You see, we don't have to own a big chunk of bushland and nature to go on a nice, quiet nature walk. We can just go out for a walk anywhere and enjoy it. You know, we had all that land and I was planning on making all these trails through it and everything, and I, and I would have, but it takes a lot of time to maintain something like that. Especially when, you know, you can just go and enjoy public parks and stuff that's taken care of for you. You can always find a nice quiet place to go for a walk. This is definitely one of my favorite places to go for a walk. You can just smell, smell the nature, you know, smell the, you know the smell of trees, especially in fall time and springtime. That's when you can smell them the most. It's just beautiful. And this trail goes all the way down here for about a, I don't know, a quarter mile, half mile. And I figured it'd be nice to come see it now with all the fall colors. But this part of Wisconsin hasn't quite hit full on spring yet. You can see this one is sort of trying to start to turn red. That one over there is a little brown, a little brown over there. It's starting. In another couple of weeks, hopefully we'll swing past here and come down here again. And this is a picture perfect spot right here. Completely quiet. I love it. Gives him a chance to stretch his legs too and I don't have to worry about, you know, him being distracted by other dogs or other people or cars. Enjoyed a nice little sunset here on our way back from our walk. It's time to buckle ourselves in again so we don't fall out. There we go. Let's get back on the road. Ready to go, Diesel? You got water down there? Oh, yes, you do. I guess it's almost supper time, eh? We'll have to stop in about an hour. Yeah. About an hour, then it's supper time, all right? 
A little too soon right now. Okay, lights, camera, action. Let's get back on the road. A nice break here. Stay here a little longer than our half hour, but we got a nice walk and we're still on track. Still on time. Got to deliver tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning. And we have six hours exactly available to us to drive yet and only about four hours worth of driving to do. And we're not gonna go all the way there, remember? I wanna stop before Milwaukee. I wanna stay out of all their, uh, all their fun they're having there. I don't really want any part of it. I don't know what's going on there right now. I know it bounces around from city to city, but they keep having, uh, shall we say, peaceful parties in the streets. And I don't wanna be a part of it, really. I just sort of want to do my thing and sneak through, you know? All right, bud. All right. Service Plus. Never seen that name before. Must be a smaller company. Wait for him to sneak in there. I'm just going to sneak right past you here, bud. Thank you. Get out of your way. We're gonna get back onto Interstate 94. Trailers, buses, and RVs. This away. Cars that way. Approaching destination in 200 meters on the left side. No. We gotta go on the truck side. Right, right, right. Look at this. Oh, good. We can park at the back here. Right on. No neighbors. Continue on this road for 70 kilometers. Let's see here, plenty of parking in here, it looks like. You know what, I don't even need to park at the back here. I'm gonna pull in here for the night. We're well away from, uh, we're about 45 minutes away from Milwaukee. This is as close as I'm gonna get for the night. I'm gonna try to park over here all by myself and see how long that lasts. Right here. This one. I choose this one. Not really tired yet, but I'm not going any closer to the city for night. Do the rest in the morning. The sun comes up. There we go. Let's just open the windows here.
I believe this is a quiet spot. This will do. Diesel, what do you think, bud? This is a good spot. Does this have the weasel stamp of approval? It's your call, man. Should we stay here for night? Don't put all your pressure on me, man. What do you think? You like it? Yeah, it's very nice. What are you looking at? Is there a dog over there? Is that what you're looking at? You see a dog? You're lying, man. Yeah, I am. There's no dog. Just me. <laughs> well, Mr. Pete, you got me through another day again. Thank you very much. It's very nice, Peter. The lights on back there. Diesel, what do you think? It was a good day, wasn't it? He's tired. I know, I always film him at the end of the day when he's all tired, because he gets tired too. He's a good navigator. He's always paying attention, always warning me of of any dog he sees that, that might attack me. He warns me of of all the cows around me. He always lets me know when there's cows and horses. Those big dogs with those funny feet, right? I know. You're a hard working weasel. You know, you deserve, you deserve credit for that. And at the end of the day, he's tired. And then I show him in the video and then I see the comments. Oh, he looks so tired and sad. No, he's just tired, just like me. Look at me. Full day of work. I look sad too, don't I? I'm not sad. I'm glad. It's bedtime. Don't be sad. Be glad. Oh, no. Let's see if I can get on here. I've got to keep you guys wired up here because my camera's dead. So, it is once again bedtime, and the day was a success, I would say. Nothing to report, and that's a good day. Nothing happened. We went on our nice walk, got our exercise in. Tomorrow's going to be a good day. Tomorrow we unload our freight in Racine, Washington. No, I keep wanting to say Washington. Racine, 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 Wisconsin. And then we head down to Arthur, Illinois. We pick up a loaded trailer there that's preloaded, I believe. And we head to Ontario. So, feels good to be back. I miss home, though. I'm sure you miss home. You miss Chevy and Wiener. It's been a long day, man. We just go to bed, please. Look at him. Diesel. The Weasel. You are the Weasel. Capital T H E. The Weasel. I know. I know. That's special. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today, everybody. Just a day cruising through Wisconsin and Minnesota for the most part. Uh, if you like my video uh, and you want to help me out, uh, there's links down below to ways you can help me out. Uh, there are also very basic ways you can help me out just by liking the video or disliking the video. Either way, it tells YouTube that people are engaging with my video and it recommends it to more people that way. So even those of you who put the thumbs down, I thank you because you are helping me. Appreciate it. All the comments down below, they also help YouTube with the algorithms. But the best thing you can do is uh, share the video. Tell, tell your friends about me. And if you don't want to do any of that, that's cool too. I'll see you back here tomorrow. Subscribe down below, and I'll see you then. <laughs>